Welcome to official 100 climbs number four, Porlock Hill A Road, which according to Strava has a profile comprising 6.1 kilometers with average gradient 6.3%. And that's not unlike Porlock Toll Road. But that's where the similarity ends because by comparison, the Porlock Toll Road is a very hospitable climb with 366 meters of ascending that welcomes you into its 6.4 kilometers of tarmac replete with switchbacks and draped with a beautiful even 5.5% gradient across a sublime Exmoor countryside with epic views. Check out the link at the end of the video for my full Porlock toll road climb with ubiquitous power overlay. Now the Porlock Hill A road is a very much less cordial piece of geology. It elects to cram the first 323 metres of its 385 vertical into just 2.5 kilometres of asphalt. Now granted, the final 3.5 kilometres of the climb are pretty easy, but you have to get past the initial two and a half kilometre barricade, averaging 12.3%, with sections of 20 to 30% in order to get there. This is my kind of climb, one where refinement goes out the window and brute force is the order of the day. This is Climbing Without Mercy. This overcast early AM assault represents my second ascent of the week up the A road. Having practiced it two days earlier on a crisp and clear autumn morning following my redemption climb on the toll road. Now in my opinion, power and speed trump pretty. So vanity prevails and I present my best effort here on official 100 climb number four on my trusty but portly 8.25 kilogram Colnago C60. But over the top end of this climb, we're gonna work in some of the spectacular footage from two days prior, because the rain and cross headwinds on this attempt would otherwise detract from the viewing experience. Now, as you've seen from the first 600 meters of this climb, the gradients have been averaging 10 to 11%, but I did stay seated and very disciplined on the power, averaging 300 watts, i.e. just over FTP. Because while the gradient was unpleasant, I was very, very cognizant of what was lurking around this hairpin. I rise up and out the saddle to reacquaint myself with the abrupt change in terrain. Now key here is embracing the sudden change in pace and accepting that you're gonna be in the red for at least a kilometer and substantially so when the gradient goes past 15%. But at the same time, you do wanna avoid excessive watts. So for context, my FTP is about 290 and I averaged 330 watts over that one kilometer subsegment.
So here we are at nearly the penultimate final brutal ramp. And definitely it feels like a real triumph to get this far with half decent speed. So definitely time to celebrate with a little flourish of wattage and a last lunge to the sanctuary of the seven to 10% gradients. But fear not, because a little bit further down the road here, the gradient stepped down a little bit, temporarily only to three to 6%. And so my strategy along this next section was to kind of hold the watts in the kind of 270 to 300 range. And when we hit the three to 6% gradients, drop it back down into the 250 to 220 kind of range for a little bit of recuperation, because there is still a very nasty section to come. So enticingly on the horizon, just beyond the cattle grid that you can't quite see yet, lies the point in the climb two and a half kilometers in that really marks the beginning of the end, i.e. the end of the 12.3% radiancy. Now, having had in relative terms, a little bit of pampering and recuperation, I guess on the preceding kilometer, including way sub threshold on the little ramps of three to 6%, it's definitely time once again to reinvest in the power, bring the watts back up into the 300 to 330 range for a final push over the hard part of the climb. So having punched through the two and a half kilometer marker and with the gradient now rapidly slackening off to sometimes as little as one to two percent, I reason that now is another moment to ride the climb, Ed Laverack style, bring off the power a little bit and luxuriate in some recovery wattage. However, I was sure to bring it back up to sort of upper zone three, lower zone four, holding in reserve a little bit of wattage um, for the kickers that come in just a moment. Now this is the last of the kickers. And notwithstanding the cross headwind, I reckoned that I'd had a pretty good first two and a half kilometers of the climb. And therefore I got my heart set on a nice KOM time in a decent position on the Strava leaderboard. Therefore, it was definitely an opportune moment to get back up and out the saddle and deploy some big power.
Well, as many of you know, I am the ultimate fair weather rider. So hopefully a few of you will give me kudos for braving not only the 20 to 30% ramps on the Porlock Hill A road, but also this very wet and windy Exmoor weather. Anyway, turning to the climb itself, I am pretty happy with it. Definitely for the first two and a half kilometers at 12.2%, I reckon that was a PB because I invested more heavily in the power, but also I had fresher legs because last time I did it, it was straight on the back of um, a pretty good effort here up the Porlock Toll Road. But then as I kind of crested that first part of the climb and came to the moor itself, um, I was hit by a pretty nasty cross headwind. And in all honesty, I think I paid for having invested in the power a little bit more so on that first part of the climb because as I came over the top here and was hitting the kind of the different ramps, the power was ebbing anywhere from 200 to 350 watts. It was all over the place. Also, as we got towards the end of the KOM over there, I reckon I laid off the power a little bit too early, but there we go. We'll see if I got a PB overall on 100 greatest climbs. Anyway, tomorrow's a full rest day. And then on Friday, it's time for a few more antics with Scott. We'll see where the wind takes us. Don't want to be riding into a headwind, um, but really enjoying my time here as ever. But definitely um, time to get back down into Porlock for a little bit of breakfast. So what, what a difference a few days makes. There we go. It's actually pretty pleasant up here, especially because I'm fully warm after the climb. Also the wind's favourable because now it's pushing me back along the ridge. But look, what a miserable day. And look, here's something for the purists that you won't like. <laughs> yep, the purists hate that sound. My apologies. Who loves the sound of a disc break in the morning? 